Hello, Fellowship family. Brad here with your weekly update. For many of us, the last several weeks have been anything but normal. You might have tried lots of new things, played some new games with your family, your friends, even experimented with being a home barber and trying out new haircuts. As you can see, that's happened in the Ravy household. But many of us are probably longing for a sense of normal to come back. And as reopening and the desire for normal begins to come, become part of our conversation, I want to give you three quick updates about Fellowship Pellissippi and where we're at. So I think many of you are probably wanting to know what does reopening look like and when does that happen for Fellowship Church? Here's what we're doing. We're prayerfully uh, discussing and creating a plan as a leadership team. That includes our staff, our elders, uh, and the leaders from our collection of churches so that together we have one unified vision to both uh, embrace our mission as a church and love our neighbors well and also demonstrate uh, a really impeccable Christian witness in this season. Uh, our church, we've looked at the guidelines for phase one that have been provided by our local government officials. We're including the input from uh, doctors even here in our own church. And we're going to release what phase one looks like early next week to you, our church. So be on the lookout for that. And we're longing for these days. And we know the isolation has a lot of unique effects. Uh, the best we can with sound judgment and wisdom and faithfulness to our mission, we are just going to engage these days to be faithful and trust God with where we're at. So be on the lookout for phase one's plan for our church early next week. Number two is a word about this weekend, and this is going to be a timely message in our Conversations in Babylon series. Today, this weekend's theme is Lessons from the Persecuted Church. I mean, there is a lot that the American church, which is have, has had much of the frills stripped away, can learn from those who have served where the gospel is not as readily accepted, whether it be isolation or what it means to abide in Jesus and not have all of the extras. And Ryan and Laura Barr, part of our church who spent nearly a decade ministering to the persecuted church's missionaries, are going to join me. And you don't want to miss this conversation this coming Sunday, 1030, either on Fellowship's Facebook Live or on our streaming website, live.fellowshipknox.org. Click on the Pellissippi campus. But also, this Sunday, we're going to receive the Lord's Supper together as a community. Even though we'll be physically separated, we are one in Jesus, and we're going to celebrate that this weekend. So would you prepare ahead of time, ahead of the 1030 stream or on demand if you're watching it later in the day, and have some bread and, and something in the cup to represent the elements of the Lord's Supper. And we'll give all the instructions during the service about how to take that. Finally, I want to say a couple of thank yous. This has been an unusual season, and in the days ahead, it's going to continue to uh, require unique resilience, uh, re unique grace uh, from one another and to one another. And I want to say, first of all, thank you to our staff and our leadership, our elders in our congregation, many of our key volunteers. Our staff has done such a great job at helping you uh, in your disciple-making journey by providing resources. You might see me on the screen a lot, but behind the scenes, everyone from our children's ministry to our student ministry to our small groups to our missional living groups have really been providing ways for us to stay digitally connected in this time, but also to engage the heart of our Heavenly Father in His mission to bring grace, mercy, and truth to those around us. And, and I just am so grateful from uh, Kyle, Sarah, Julie, Noah, our elders, Levi, Casey, and our worship team to put on the streams each week. It's just been really phenomenal. And if you haven't already done so, would you just reach out to them and encourage them by letting them know how their ministry has helped you and your ministry? I know that would be an encouragement to them. And finally, I want to say thank you to you. Our church has been so generous over the last couple of months, but quite frankly, it's stunned me. Maybe I shouldn't be, but I've been so overwhelmed with joy and gladness for the Lord's provision through you. 
because of your generosity to continue to give, <clears throat> uh, we've been able to continue to operate our ministry as our church and do disciple making amongst families in our community. And you've even allowed us to extend that reach through benevolence or even the care package initiative to literally hundreds of our neighbors and are the most vulnerable in need around us. And uh, that's because of you. In this time, your reach has went from our church to our community all the way across the globe. So thank you, church. And I want to close with this benediction from the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 1. He says, I thank my God for every remembrance of you, always praying for you with joy in every prayer because of your partnership with me in the gospel. And then he goes on to say, God is my witness how deeply I miss you and I do miss you, church. And I pray this, that your love will keep growing in knowledge and every kind of discernment so that you may approve the things that are superior and may be pure and blameless in the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of our God. God bless you, church. Until next time, take care.